Uh, many Remember. thanks for being part of the breakfast this morning. We've been joined by uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, uh, Mr. Paul Ananaba. He's on standby to look at the second conversation. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, just before we get to you, let's quickly take a look at this. Uh, Federal High Court in Abuja has refused the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, that's the CBN, Godwin Emefili's request to restrain the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the Attorney General of the Federation, the AGF, Abubakar Malami, preventing him from his presidential ambition. The CBN governor on Monday told the court in Abuja that he can run for the post of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria without vacating his position as a CBN governor. The CBN governor, through his counsel, Mike Ozakome, told the court that Section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act as amended 2022, does not affect him being a public servant and not a political appointee. The court also in its ruling, however, summoned INEC and the Attorney General of the Federation to appear before it on the 12th to show costs on why the status quo uh, should not be granted to the CBN governor. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, we have a senior advocate of Nigeria, Professor Paul Ananamba, joining the conversation. Thank you once again for being part of the discourse this morning. Thank you. So, so the question is... Can the CBN governor run for the position or run for the presidency or the position of the president in 2023 and still occupy his office? Well, every Nigerian uh, by section 40 of the constitution has a fundamental right to run for offices, uh, join political party and all that. That's a fundamental right. But when you are a CVN governor. You have been appointed by the president. So the argument of uh, a public servant and all that, I don't think it's um, a serious argument. I don't think it should be uh, upheld. The CVN governor was appointed. He's an appointee of the president. And that's section 84 12 of a very recent law. Yes, part of that is being uh, interpreted upon by the courts. But clearly, it's not um, something that, um, in my mind, Section uh, uh, 318 of the Constitution, uh, uh, Section uh, 3171G of the Constitution, which um, some of my colleagues are putting across can cure. Um, before I even deal, deal so much about the law, the CBN governor is occupying a very sensitive position away from the niceties of the law. This is the man in charge of the monetary policy and regulation of the country. And, this, and, and then you are saying that the civilian governor should actually, uh, whether the law goes against it or not, uh, while he's there, be running for election. So what happens to those who are his political opponents, who require um, CBN approvals and all that, and policies and implementation? So it carries a lot of moral, but it doesn't, help the country for uh, a serving civilian government to still be there uh, while he's running for primaries. Um, his proponents, what happens to them, like I said? So I do not think, take another point, like INEC has an alliance with the CBN. That's where um, sensitive INEC uh, uh, documents and forms and processes are stored. So all this while, we have a civilian go governor who may not have announced uh, his intentions, but has been a, may have been politicking. So there are several issues, even aside from the law. But legally speaking, he is an appointee of the president. Uh, from the day, he doesn't need a prophet to tell him that from the day 
he has now chosen to join the political fray. And he should allow the sanctity of the office of the CBN governor to be intact. So, so he can take himself away and uh, go for politicking. And if you look at the CBN Act, Section 9, for him to even decide to um, talk about politics in any form, as serious as running for the presidency of this country, the, the CBN board ought to give him approval. And in the suit he filed uh, a few days ago, the CBN board and the CBN is not a party. Now he goes after political parties, uh, goes after the Attorney General and the INEC, saying that they, they will uh, stop him, which is very speculative, a very speculative and suit that I don't think should have been filed. So I don't think he should continue on this trajectory. The civilian governor should make up his mind. He wants to run for presidency. He's a Nigerian, he's entitled to it. He should uh, excuse himself from the office of of the CBN governor. But if he doesn't, if he wants to be uh, a CBN governor, let him be. He cannot be carrying an elephant and be you know, uh, using his leg to find where uh, some minor insects are. He has to take a decision in the best interest of this country. That's my position. Thank you. All right. But what then is the essence of having the summon, the court asking that you have the Attorney General of the Federation and INEC come through uh, on May the 12th? What's the essence of all of that if we understand that the law is very explicit? I mean, it's very explicit that he's, uh, the CBN governor is partisan. Now, when a, if a suit is filed in court, the court has its own procedures. No matter how a case goes, the court will go through due process. That's why we go to courts. Now, having filed that suit, he wanted to obtain an order. Uh, like just as you've been hearing, an expert order is made, and, and all that, and there's confusion. Uh, the judge uh, dispensed justice. The judge is my job. The judge did his job properly. The judge now says, I will not give you an ex parte order behind uh, the Attorney General and the INEC. Go and serve them this process. Let them come. And then we'll discuss whether you can. While you are still holding the CBN office, you'll be using it. The time you will use to go to politic, while you are still giving you, where will you get? Who, who, who owns it? So they, there are a lot of things that, could, that has to be looked at before the court decides whether to say yes, you can or you cannot. Um, it is still in court, so we we'll await what the court will say. But while we are doing that, um, I think the civilian governor needs to do a deep thinking. Look at our economy. Look at how much a dollar is. Look at how much a pound is. Now, we are grappling with serious financial issues in this country. Uh, do we actually have the luxury of the CBN governor uh, going for politics? When he was not in politics, how did the economy fail? How did as, as our currency policies gone that you now add a distraction of politics. But, but, but let's also look at this. Uh, you are a senior advocate of Nigeria. What kind of democracy and electoral process have we been practicing? Uh, we are also being made to understand that sensitive electoral materials are in the custody of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And then you also have a governor who is appointed by the president. Uh, what sort of democratic process and electoral process do we practice? And what becomes of Nigeria? Paraventure, um, you know, he makes it and then he becomes a flag bearer of a party. 
and eventually becomes a candidate for the elections in 2023. Well, I, I, I alluded to it, I touched it earlier. It is a tragedy we are facing in the country. It, it's going to put, put a lot of pressure on our neck, but the, um, it will be difficult for our neck to continue to work with CBN now uh, in respect of all, there are several things that INEC will do with CVN in, to ensure that elections are free, fair, credible, and acceptable. Now, if we, with, with the entrance of the CVN governor into this fray, um, INEC will have to do a rethink, we have to re-strategize. That is an added load. Because you know what it is? Across the country, all the sensitive documents, forms, and processes of CBN. Who are they going to? Who are they going to work with? Are they going to work with commercial banks? Are they going to build safes? Are we going to say, "Oh well, don't mind. You're just a CBN governor." CBN governor is a serious position in CBN. So it's it's a it's a challenge, but I think that there will be a solution, and that solution will be for the CBN governor to make up his mind. And in the interest of patriotism and the generality of Nigerians to decide whether he wants to be a CBN governor or whether he wants to be a president. All right, so just to put um, put differently, to just rest this matter as it is, for him to be justified to run, he just has to resign his position as a CBN governor, right? That's the position I've taken. I think that if he decides to be a CBN, now look at the situation. The CBN governor has sued the Attorney General of the Federation. The Attorney General of the Federation is the chief law officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So when you sue the Attorney General of the Federation, you have technically sued the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now this is the CBN governor of the Federal Republic of Nigeria suing, as we can say, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Where is the trust and confidence as we move on? So those are the issues I was leading to that and saying, listen, we have had enough distraction in this country, a lot, lot of challenges. Uh, the civilian governor should spare us this particular uh, challenge now. All right. We we'll must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Professor Paul Ananaba, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, for clearing the air uh, to all those uh, great areas that we had on this particular issue. Thank you once again. Thank you. All right, uh, Mercy, uh, you've heard from the Senior Advocate of Nigeria, because really, I, wh when he was doing the analysis, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria is part of the federal government. He was appointed by the federal government. Now, he's, a, he's actually suing the Attorney General of the he's, a, he's appointed by the, the, the president. Yes, yeah, so he's part of the federal government. Of course. And he's also suing the Attorney General of the Federation, who also is part of government, federal government. So, like, as if you, you're suing your own family members. So, um, <laughs> it, also, it brings us back to the point where we talk about the, the law, the constitution, and the mm. lacunas in the constitution. Now, it feels like the ruling class or the elite understands that there are a lot of lacuna. So, a lot of persons take advantage of these loopholes. Let's not forget that when you approach the court of uh, the interpretation, despite whatever mm. it is, you probably might just have an interpretation. So, it's another thing to have it being stated critically, but as long as you you approach the court, the court will deal with it. Yes, but should we get to a point where we make experts law, we're mm. very specific with some of these concerns yeah, because true. it's a conflict of interest. As a matter of fact, in mm. law, you cannot be a person of interest in your own case. So, it's mm. a situation where you have the CBN being a custodian of sensitive materials, electoral materials, how have we been operating thus far in electoral process? But that's the size of our conversation on the breakfast this morning. We'll definitely return tomorrow with more interesting conversations. Please stay with us. If you missed out on any part of it that's all right to follow us on facebook twitter and instagram and do subscribe to our youtube channel what plus tv africa and plus tv africa lifestyle i am messy Bupo. have a great day and i'm justin academia many thanks for being a part of the show stand by for the news top of the hour